Welcome back to this second part in this NavMesh tutorial. In this part, we're going to control the speed of the agents. As we've currently left it, the agents, if they move fast enough, will go off of the path. And you can see them here where they're meant to be going across this bridge, but their momentum is carrying them across the actual road surface instead. What we want them to do is approach their path that they need to take and then slow down when they have a really sharp corner to go through. So we need to be controlling their acceleration. If you have a look at one of your agents in the nav mesh, you'll see that you have this speed that you can set, but you also have an acceleration. And this acceleration is put into work for accelerating and decelerating in the nav mesh agent behind the scenes stuff. We need to be able to change this acceleration based on the path and where the agent's going to go. Right, so let's first of all select all of the extra capsules that you might have created and we'll just turn those off so that we're only working with just one agent at this point. What I want you to do is to create a sphere. So 3D object sphere and we want to make sure that that sphere is above the ground and visible, though actually we are going to move it later on. So you just want a sphere that the default size is fine. What I want to show you is how the agent is calculating its path and where it's going to next. So we know it's going to a particular goal, which is one of our cubes, but we don't necessarily know by just looking at it where it's aiming for because it's going in a sort of an arc because of its momentum. So open up your code and what we're going to do is allow for that sphere to be passed in. So up the top public game object um, sphere, I'll just call it SP. We're going to set the position of the sphere to the target location that the agent is heading towards. So in the update, outside of these brackets you've already added, let's put sp.transform.position equals agent dot. Now this is a property that you can get from the NavMesh agent class and it's called steering target. Now this is going to help us visualize exactly where our agent is heading towards. So save that. Go back to Unity and you want to select your capsule, find where we've now exposed that sphere, which is underneath all of the goals here, and drag and drop that into place. Now it's going to move whenever the agent does. So let's now press play and we'll see the agent moving towards this goal position. And so the goal position modifies itself. It's not the it's not the goal, I guess, the final goal of where it's going to. It's the target. You can see here that the agent's now having a little bit of difficulty getting through that door because of its momentum. I mean, it's eventually going to get through the door, um, but that's what we're trying to do now. We want to slow the agent down. So what we need to do, first of all, is just take a good look at what's happening with this agent and the sphere. So once it's gone there... See if I can pause this at the right time. Okay, we're pausing it there. And what you've got, if I just move in a little bit closer and select that capsule and hit the W key, the capsule is facing this way. Okay, so this is its forward facing vector. This is where its steering target's going to be. So what the NavMesh Agent Co is going to do is to turn this guy around to line up the um, forward facing vector with the direction of travel so that it's going in a forward direction. Now the issue here is if the agent has to turn around like through a very large angle, if it's traveling fast, it, it'll have to arc and go like that. Obviously it can't because there's a wall in this case, but if it was in a free space, it would have to arc and go like this. If it was already facing pretty much in that direction, then it would just have to push along and go forward towards it. So our issue here is if the angle away from our steering target is big enough, then we want to kind of put a lot of braking on and slow the agent right down so that it can turn more or less close to being on the spot before it heads off 
again, which is going to stop it from cutting corners and going off the original path. Right, so stop that. Go back into your Wanda code, and we're now going to get rid of our sphere because it was only to illustrate what was going on. We'll get rid of that there. Then we're going to put some code as an else to our if for changing our goal, and it's going to be else if agent dot has path. Now, doing a has path checks if the agent is following a particular path because if it's reached, reached a destination and you haven't set another destination, it'll just be hanging around doing nothing and it won't have a path. You don't need to be slowing it down or speeding it up if it's not following a path. Now, the code we're going to add will be inside of this if else and it'll look like this. So what it's saying, first of all, is we will need a vector three to target. This is the angle, uh, or I should say it's the direction to the target or to that steering target from our current position. And so here we go. Here's our agent.steering target minus the agent's current position, which will give us that particular vector. Then we're going to work out what the turn angle is. And the turn angle is the angle between the direction that we're facing and the direction that we want to be facing. And then we use the turn angle to apply it to the acceleration. And so the acceleration is going to be based on whatever the turn angle is multiplied by the agent speed. So this means that the agent can get quite fast and the turn angle will adjust for it. And because of the acceleration for being applied for slowing down as well as speeding up, then this will, if the turn angle is very large, put a great big force of deceleration onto the agent to make sure you slow right down before you start turning around. And that will stop the agent from wandering off the actual path and leaving the areas that you, you want it to stay on. So save that, switch back to Unity and press play. And now you'll see the changed behavior in your agent. So it's going down here, it's coming back. It's gonna to get to this path. So he does take the path. He can get through doors a lot better than he was before. Whereas before he was bouncing around trying to get in the door and he's going along the path and staying on the path. He's not sweeping out wildly away from where he should be going. Now, if that's too direct for you, then you can modify that multiplication value. Uh, for example, in here, you could divide this whole thing by two if you wanted to tone it down a little bit and you know just do a little bit of extra fancy maths on that if you don't want it to be as strong as I've made it there. And in fact, if you get rid of the speed, completely you'll see that you get quite nice turning until the speed gets much larger and that's why I put the speed in here as a factor in determining the acceleration. All right so that now if you grab the other capsules and turn them back on again they should have had their script for Wanda updated and we can now press play and you'll see that they all stay nicely on the paths that they're meant to go on and you don't see any of them jaywalking across the road. Remember, this is our sphere that we had before, not one of the agents. And you could probably delete that now. All right, so that is how to use the uh, angles involved in the paths to set the speed of your agent for something that's a little bit more controlled. In the next lecture, part three of this series, I want to show you how you can get them to go onto the road when you want to. So we'll simulate like a panic situation and they'll panic and they'll forget they're not allowed to walk on the road and they will walk on the road during that time of panic. Um, right, so I will see you in the next tutorial. Remember, if you want to know more about programming of AI in Unity, then check out my Udemy course devoted to all types of AI for controlling NPC behavior. And if you'd like to support this channel and see more great tutorials come up for free on YouTube, then consider visiting my Patreon page and signing up and have a look at all the different benefits that you will get, which includes free access to the Udemy courses. And one more thing, please subscribe and help to make this channel the most popular Unity tutorial channel on YouTube.